Hi everyone, it's Diane with Sobatique and today is Fabric Friday. Well, we accomplished our goal. We finished the fringe dress and the simple jersey knit dress, which is a McCall's pattern that we're going to address first. I'm really excited that I was able to finish all of the projects, even though it's in June and I did get a little bit of help. I did not personally sew the fringe dress, but I received a lot of fantastic notes, suggestions, ideas, and things we're going to go through here today on our pattern review of both the McCall's 8064, which is the dress pattern, and the fringe pattern, which is a dress and blouse by Chalk and Notch. So the first one I wanna go through is the simplest of both, which is this jersey knit dress. And I have to tell you that it is so comfortable it's so cute and even though i did it in a really really dark shade this is the phoenix motif and the colorway is purple magic i really just i really love the style of these simple dresses and it's just a, sh a short sleeve it has a really nice tapered shape from the bust down to the waist and then it has a really decent flare through the hemline and here's a picture. Let me jump back just a little bit. This is a picture of the jacket front, the cover. And there are so many options, like I've mentioned before with this particular dress pattern. And again, it's McCall's 8064. This used to be a different number and I will find the number so that you can reference that if you have an older version of this in your pattern collection. But the, the what you will notice between the dupe the two patterns is that this particular picture of the garment is exactly the same between both patterns. This pattern is very diverse. It has a sleeveless, it has a short sleeve, it has a three quarter length sleeve and a long sleeve. It also has a dress length, which is just above the knee, which is what this dress is. This is view E. And then it also has, I think it was view E. Yes, view E. It also has a mid length and a maxi length. So there are so many options here for you to do anything you want and to really perfect the shape of this dress to your, your structure and your fit level. I would like to talk a little bit about the sizing of this dress. There are two different patterns, that two different brackets of patterns. One is an extra small to a medium. The other is a large to an XXL. Now, those letters mean nothing unless you have your measurements. And so I'm just gonna take you through a quick little thing because I, I believe that on this particular dress, your touch points really, because it's out of a knit, are the bust, here and the waist. The hip, you will see here, um, isn't quite as important for one reason. The bust ease is about an inch, as is the waist, and then the hip drops down to about, I should say increases, to about an eight inch ease. And so it has a little bit of flow to it. Um, so I think you just need to make those plans. I always start with my pattern to fit at the shoulders and the bust, and that's what I did for my particular dress. So let's jump back to the measurements. A bust measurement of an extra small is a 29 and a half, and then to a range of a medium is a 36. A large, which is gonna jump you to that next size bracket, is a 38 bust to a 48 bust. So I am using the large to the XXL because I started and made a straight large. And like I mentioned before, the ease 
around the bust area, even though it's you know recommended for a knit, is one inch. So there is a little bit of movement, um, and I feel like that's pretty comfortable for this particular garment. And then I think just depending on your your style of body and your measurements, the waist really does matter. It tapers in pretty dramatically and then comes back out again. So I don't know if you can see, this is so dark, but I'm just pulling this out. I'm not gonna hold up the pattern piece this time because they're just so simple. It just goes in and back out again. So you're getting a pretty dramatic hourglass shape with this pattern. And then the sleeve, um, all of the sleeve lengths are in one sleeve pattern. And then you have the choice, actually I missed this, you have the choice of your neckline. There's a V-neck, a round neck, and a, and a lower curved neck. I did the round neck, which is way up at your collar, um, or your right up here. <laughs> so you'll see pictures of me wearing this as well. Um, but that is uh, what I did for this. So I again combined more than one view. I wanted the length of E simply because I only pre-washed a yard and a half of our jersey knit. And so I needed to make the shorter version because that's what I started with is a yard and a half. I thought I had two yards, but I didn't. So when I laid it out, I realized I couldn't make a longer version of it. I just made the shorter version. And so I made view C, which is the taller neck. Okay, so it doesn't reveal very much. And then the length of it is E, which is the shorter length. So I did a combination of both of those. Let me take a minute to talk about the yardage because this is always a common question that we receive about how are we dealing with the 72 inches of our jersey knit and um, how many yards do we really need if the example on the back is for 60 inch wide fabric. So I'm going to take you through this just a little bit because I was quite surprised. Now think about this for just a minute. We have a simple dress. There are no seams in this. So it is one pattern piece for the front, one pattern piece for the back. Both are on the fold. And they have a flare, quite a flare. So I think what I'll do to describe this a little bit better is I'll put up a picture here so that you can see how I position the fabric on, or the pattern pieces on my fabric. And was able to actually get this length dress, which again fits or um, lands just above my knee and out of a yard and a half. So the E recommendation is two and three eighths yards for 60 inch wide fabric. So that's quite a savings of yardage if we can play with our pattern pieces and really use every inch of the fabric width, okay? So this one really worked out really, really well. But here's what I did. You cannot, and I hate to say that, but don't fold your fabric with salvages touching with one fold. That is a waste of fabric. You will have so much extra space around the, the, the fabric piece itself that it's a waste. Um, you basically have to fold one salvage in straighten it to make sure you've got your knit on the straight of grain and then lay your pattern piece on that using your hem width is really the widest portion of this garment okay so that will take up that width of the folded fabric in okay you're going to have to go ahead and pin that and cut out that pattern piece then fold the other salvage in and flip that. So let's say that was the front that you just cut. Now we're gonna cut the back, okay? We're gonna flip that over and you're gonna cut it the other direction so that you can get, again, the exact same pattern piece almost. The only thing that's different is the back of the sleeve and the curve of the neck. Um, so you're gonna cut that out of the second side. And then there's plenty of space left for your sleeve and the facing for your collar or your the collar facing itself. 
So that's all it was. And I believe since I started with the large and I was using the pattern pieces for the large to the XXL, you can get an XXL short sleeve out of a yard and a half of our jersey knit. And that really surprised me. Um, I didn't think I was going to be able to do that, but I was. Um, so even if you're going to make, um, we could have made it longer had I not had a sleeve. So if you want the sleeveless version of this dress, you can get a longer version of it out of a yard and a half of our jersey knit. I, I just think that's so fantastic because we save on money and we save on yardage and it's just, it's absolutely wonderful. That's not always true with every single pattern, but when we have the ability to flip the pattern pieces so that, you know, the hem is over here on this piece and the hem is over here on this piece and we can really finagle our fabric, it works beautifully. Okay, so that is really a little bit about the yardage and how I laid it out. And of course, everything was pre-washed. The one other piece, the, the construction of this dress is truly simple, truly simple. And this is like a great pattern for learning how to work with knit and how to size the pattern for yourself. I basically used my serger to do most of the sewing. I surged my shoulder seams first and I use stay tape to make sure that the shoulders don't stretch out of proportion when putting the dress on or taking it off. And so that's never in any one of our pattern instructions, but it's a really great product to always have is stay tape, stitch it into your seam, make sure that it's there and it'll just remove any of that excess stretching that you may have. Then what I did is I skipped my steps around with the um, construction and I went ahead and attached my sleeve before my side seams, sewing up my side seams. So I simply positioned my sleeve in the opening, stitched that down and I searched the whole thing and that fit beautifully. And then I finish my edges of my sleeve with a surged edge so that all I'm doing is folding it under and top stitching it. I didn't do the cover stitch. Um, I could have done the cover stitch on the sleeves and the hem, but I just wanted to make it a little bit simpler for myself and not have to switch up my serger. So I, I just, I took the easy way out, but cover, using your cover stitch and just finishing your edges is really a great way to do this as well. My next step is to add the collar uh, facing or neckband. Here's the pattern piece for the neckband. And this shouldn't be shocking, it's just a straight neckband that is has all of its indicators of the size. I cut out the large because the garment I was making was a large. In hindsight, knowing that I'm working with a knit that has 20% stretch, that's not a lot of stretch. And this here, really didn't allow for even a knit that had more stretch than that. So I would recommend with our jersey knit, taking off about one to two inches off your neckband and then following the instructions to sew it together in the round, fold it in half with wrong sides together to create your finished neckband and then Pin it to the right side of your garment, front and back, matching all of the notches. And you will have to stretch that neckband just a little bit. But I believe that that will make the difference in this neckband standing up versus laying flat. So this version of the dress, I used the exact I'm just gonna repeat it. I used the exact large measurement that came with the pattern piece and it just really didn't have any stretch. It was like laying a woven on a woven. Um, so I think that's what makes it stand up like this. And I would like to change that. Even though I kind of like the look, it kind of gives it this really cute look to it because it's, it's still finished nicely. And what I did is I surged it on and then I uh, pressed it up and top stitched all the way around the collar to keep that um, the, the neckband standing up, okay? Or laying flat. So there, that step is not in the pattern. It does not tell you to top stitch. I just like the look of it 
finishing nicely and not having to fuss with it at all after it's washed and worn and washed and worn. Um, so recommendation, I'm going to summarize this, is to cut a couple of inches off your neckband and then attach it to your garment. The other thing that is a personal preference is the height of your neckband. This ends up being about an inch or three fourths of an inch of a neckband on here. And if you want it to be smaller, narrower, whatever, just reduce the size of your piece instead of it being about, I think this is about two and a quarter to almost two and a half inches wide. Um, and that's including that five eighths of an inch seam allowance that's on this pattern and most McCall's patterns. Um, you can cut this narrower and then um, you'll, you won't have as high of a neck band, okay? But otherwise, I, it's a simple, 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 simple garment. One that it, had I just sat down and laid out my pattern pieces and cut out the pattern pieces and sewed it up would probably take me two hours or less. It's that fast. So um, it's a great pattern to have in your um, pattern box and use it often. It's just so simple and so shapely and easy, easy, easy to work with once you figured out whether or not you need this extra small to medium or the large to extra large. So I don't think I have anything else to say about this particular garment. I think you will absolutely love it. The next, next garment I want to spend some time on is the fringe dress and blouse. And let me share with you, I really, I'm wearing it today and I absolutely love it. It is really a cute dress and I think you can kind of see that it has a really nice hemline and there's pockets that are great. It has a button closure down the front. It has the tab detail on the sleeve and everything you know something it's not too low it's not too high it just really fits nicely and it has gathers all the way around the waistband with a really nice flare to the skirt and i really do i really love this it's like one of the most comfortable dresses i think i have worn in a long time. And I'd like to take you through some of the detail of this pattern. Let me talk a little bit about the overall options for the pattern, the sizes, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about some detail. Here's the front of the pattern itself. Isn't it just so cute? And there are two options. There's a view A and a view B. View A is the one that was shown on the cover and the one that I made, which has the tabs on the sleeve and the buttons. Um, you don't really even need to, to open the buttons, to be honest, it just slides over your head. Um, but view B, I'm gonna turn this around. View B is a different neckline with no buttons. And so it's just a simple, elegant facing. And then the sleeves do not have a tab on them. They're just simply going to fall down on your sides and um, that's it. It's just such a cute, cute, cute dress. Now you can also make this a blouse length, but I just, there's nothing like a summer dress like this. I think it's perfect for any events or just wearing to work. So it's, it's super comfortable. Now the pattern is sizes zero to a 30. And the great thing about this pattern is that it has multiple bus cup options. So you can work with your an A slash B option or a CD, and it gives you instructions on how to measure and how to find the right option for yourself. And there are darts that come up the front that help with the shaping. There are not side darts. They are coming from the waistband right here. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the sizing on this. And I'm gonna work off of the size, um, the full bust option for an AB, which is a zero is 32 inches. And then for a 30, it is 56 inches. I'll tell you right now that I made a straight, a, a, straight, a straight 12, no adjustments to it, just a 12. 
And so my um, bust is really a 39, but the body measurements are for a 38 and a half. So I really um, took a chance, but when I was looking at the finished um, garment measurements, that's when I decided that I didn't want a super amount of ease. And let me see if I can find the finished garment measurements for a 12 are 41 and a half. So there's only three inches of ease in the bust area. So take that into consideration. If you prefer more or less, that is, that is the adjustment that you need to make. So I stuck with the 12 because I didn't want to have any more ease than that. I didn't want it to look super big, knowing that the arms were going to have this shape. I just felt like that was going to be the right option. And it was, it was. Okay, now the, the pattern itself is, I was thinking of, of actually going through the waist measurements too. For a zero, it's a 25 inches. And then for a 30, they're 49 inches because your waist does matter. It's, it's cinching it right around your waist here and then it flares dramatically. So hips to me, it doesn't matter. Um, there's so much ease in this garment itself. Okay, the pattern is so neat. It is, first of all, it's an advanced intermediate, or it says it, it's an intermediate. Um, I kind of believe it is an advanced beginner, and I'm taking a lot of my comments from my friend Kathy, who went through the process of sewing this garment, and it was a new pattern company for her. It's a new pattern company for me. And um, we have a lot of notes and a lot of recommendations that I am going to share with you. But the pattern jacket itself is super cool. I don't know if that matters to any of you, but it has this little um, area here for recording your body measurements, recording any of your fit issues or concerns or thoughts as you go through making this garment so that you always have them going forward when you're going to make a second one. Because I know once we find a pattern that we absolutely love, we like to make many of them. Um, and so it even has a, a place to attach fabric swatches so you can just have this as your history. And then inside are of course all of the papers. And I have them all back in here so I'm not gonna do anything more with this packet. Okay, let's go through the booklet and I'm going to talk through a little bit about the garment at the same time. And I think this is just a really great way to illustrate um, the steps that are in this pattern. And you're going to have to be the judge of whether or not it really should be considered an intermediate garment or not. But um, I really, I am a you know, advanced beginner kind of a status here, but um, let's get started on this particular pamphlet. Now, it does take you through all of the views. It takes you through each one of the sizes, the finished garment to get you to the right options for you. And it also shows you how to fit each one of the pattern pieces. Because the one thing that I didn't mention earlier is that I did mention that there is a bust art for the, um, a, B. There is also an additional side dart for cups C, D. So just know that. And it, there are instructions on how to incorporate a full bust adjustment into the bodice of this pattern. So if that is something that you do need to, um, to include, definitely follow these steps to do that. And... Then we jump over to all the pattern pieces themselves, but the one thing that is missing from this particular pattern is a layout. If you're used to opening up your pattern and seeing a beautiful layout of how do I lay out a view A size 12 on 45 inch wide fabric, it is not in here. And so maybe that's part of why this is considered an intermediate pattern, I don't know, but it is missing. So you have to kind of use your uh, intuition and experience on how to lay out all the different pattern pieces themselves. But just make sure that you have everything here, whether or not it's for the fabric or for the interfacing and for the size that you are, that you are making, okay? Now, it starts by, you know, 
simply every pattern starts this way which is apply your interfacing to all of the facing pieces or your pocket pieces whatever it happens to be because the side of the pocket here does have an interfacing to give it just a tad bit of stability and our project kit includes the envy silk interfacing and it just gives it that really simple weight addition to the garment itself um, the one note, and I'm going through Kathy's notes also on this particular pattern, just so that you can kind of hear it from her perspective. We do use a serger to finish off edges of everything. So the inside facing, instead of turning the, um, the right side to the wrong side and then top stitching to create that edge, I run it through the serger. And so I showed Kathy what I do for that. And so she did do that on this particular garment. And so we do have a nice, clean, surged cut edge. And um, the one thing too that I completely forgot to share with you is one of the views, I think it's view B, has, I don't know if you can see this, but there are lines, like a darker line on the sides of this particular line drawing. That was one thing that it took us a long time to find in this pattern there is an optional waist tie. You attach the tie and then it goes to the back. So if you want something that's a little tighter um, around your waistline, you have that option. But it took a while for us to find that. I don't know why we weren't just looking for it, but it is right here, right at the beginning where it is an optional uh, step to sew the ties on to your garment. I of course did not do that because it fits it fits just fine, but if you are making something that has a larger um, ease to it at the waist and you want something like that as an option, definitely include the ties um, in your steps to assemble this garment, okay? But it also then jumps over to where you have an option for the uh, bust of a CD, your cup size is there, to add the optional um, darts, your side darts. Again, all of this stuff has to be ahead, done ahead of time when you plan out your pattern pieces themselves. So it's really good idea to read through this guide before you get going on cutting out your fabric. I think everything else as far as attaching your facing, that's the first thing that you're doing and creating the sleeve tabs and things like that. It is um, just a step-by-step -step process of adding your tabs. You, you, this is a folded sleeve finish, so there's no stitching on the edge. It's a very wide sleeve that's folded in half and then stitched inside here to seal off any edges. Now, the one thing that Kathy asked me was, why did we have a buttonhole, a buttonhole for this tab? And whether or not the tab was, was the right length or not the right length, my thought was, well, if you take the tab down and, let me stand up here, and um, just let your sleeve down, you wouldn't need the tab. It's just gonna have a button up there well, you kind of see the tab. So she does have a good point. If you want the detail of the tab, there is no reason why you can't simply stitch the button through the tab to the shirt and not have a buttonhole in the tab. So that is something to consider if you are never going to take and drop the sh shirt sleeve because you're gonna see the tab. So anyway, <laughs> that was just one of those, hmm, I wonder what the intent of that was. And I think it's supposed to be hidden if you want it to be lowered. So, um, but otherwise the sleeve is then attached, flipped up underneath and then top stitched to finish. Um, so you're creating your own little casing on your sleeve to finish it off beautifully. Um, the you do have the option of the pockets. I just think that, I don't know if I could exist with this nice, beautiful skirt without the pockets. And it they're just a standard pocket that is a curve. It's kind of a an, um, an eardrop curve to it. And so that's a simple assembly that you add your pockets, finishing them as you go before you stitch your side seams down. And you're stitching your pocket into your side seam as you're stitching it down. 
Um, and then I think the, the hem is next. So we've created our top, we're creating the bottom. And I will tell you, I learned something. Kathy is really, she's a very skilled seamstress. I have to, I have to say, and I learned how to add a bias strip to the hem because the hem itself, as I showed you earlier, is very curved. It has a, kind of a shirt tail. Is that what you would call that hem? Um, it's really a very nice detail to it. But um, I would, had I made this garment, I would have surged that edge, turned it under, and then top stitched all the way along that edge. Well, if you're, if you're, you're stitching on a curve for that hem, you're going to get gathers and you're going to get, you're going to have to really work with that uh, hemline to make sure that you don't have any excessive puckers or things aren't moving on you or stretching on you. There's a couple ways to do that. One is to simply uh, stitch a quarter inch or create another stitch line so that you can gather that stitch line around your curves before you stitch your hem in place. The other is what Kathy taught me how to do, which is to create a bias strip. And this just looks like, I should have asked her ahead of time. I think it's a one inch bias strip. She'll correct me on this, but I think it's a one inch bias strip. And she, she stitched that to the hem and then pressed the bias strip down and top stitched. And so when you're working around the curves itself, it's just smooth because of the bias in that strip. It's just, it's beautiful. And so I'm going to do that on all of my future garments that have a curved hem to them like that or a shirt tail hem. I just think it was a great thing. And um, I really love that option. And she has taught me many, a many a thing. So I appreciate that very much. So with the hem finished, then it's time to add your gather stitches to your um, waistline of the skirt, okay? Now she recommended, the pattern recommends two um, gathering lines that you stitch and then you're going to pull your gathers, okay? So a lot to gather, this is quite full. I'm gonna stand up here. It is quite full. And um, she recommended three stitch lines instead and separate so that you have a front gather line, stitch line and a back or four of them. But the pattern instructions suggest stitching all the way around the waistband and then gathering all the way around. And I have to agree that I rarely do that. I will have more than one gathering line of thread so that it makes it so much easier to work with that thread and, and work its way around the waistband. And then your bodice is attached to your waistband. And then we took it over to the serger and sealed that edge all the way around and it finishes the garment beautifully. And then she added buttonholes and buttons and I just love it. So I can't thank Kathy enough for, for stitching up this dress and doing such a beautiful job with it and her notes and um, teaching me so many things along the way. I really, it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. And I hope this uh, little introduction to the fringe um, dress and blouse really is a good one for you and uh, you got to jump in and make this dress truly you will you will love it and it is not difficult even though it does say intermediate on here there are a lot of different steps um, but I think if you follow the booklet uh, verbatim and read it a couple of times it's really something that I think we don't do enough and I know I'm probably talking about myself I will sit and think that I know everything and just start and go and go and go until I realize that I, I surged an edge that I shouldn't have surged and that was prob probably silly had I just read the booklet. So go ahead and read this booklet a couple of times. Find all your pattern pieces. There are a lot of pattern pieces and where one is used for two positions in a garment, get your tracing paper out and trace a second pattern piece so that you always have 
um, each one of your pattern pieces separate and, and don't get confused with what you're trying to do with the pattern pieces themselves. So I really love it. And I hope you dive in and make one of these amazing dresses from whether or not it be rayon or linen or I probably would just stick with a woven fabric for this. But I did make this out of our rayon and this is the Violetta motif in the shade of Copen Blue. And it's just, it's gorgeous. I just love it. Um, now yardage, I don't think I ever said the yardage and I apologize for that, but we three and a quarter yards of the rayon made this dress um, and I again was a size 12 so if you're using 44 inch wide fabric and it's our rayon um, sizes 0 to 8 is 2 and 3 fourths yards sizes 10 to 18 is 3 and a quarter yards sizes 20 to 24 is 3 and a half yards so just a little bit more for the length and sizes 26 to 30 is four yards. So we'll have kits for each one of those options. And you have the option of getting the pattern with your yardage and your interfacing. And I think that's it. So this was really a fun, fun week to finish a couple of projects and to share with you these really fun summer dresses. And I have to tell you that um, I'm gonna be working on a bunch more. I think this is my summer for dresses and uh, you'll probably get sick of me with all the different kinds of dress patterns that truly are out there. Dresses and tops are my summer, summer thing. And in the middle of all of that, I'm also going to be making my canvas overalls and um, that's gonna be fun as well. So, okay, so today we talked about Jersey Knit, our 72 inch wide Jersey Knit. We talked about our rayon and um, this project didn't need any interfacing, but had it, I would have also used the Envy Silk interfacing um, for that project as well. I had to, I always have to switch needles when I'm working on Jersey and then we have a rayon. So we have our stretch needle and we have a top stitching needle over here. And the thread that I always use is our Madeira thread when it comes to sewing on the serger or our so fine thread from Superior, which is a polyester. Um, I think that's it. So if you have any questions about these two garments or want me to explain anything more, let me know in the comments below. And we hope that you are having a wonderful start to your weekend and a wonderful happy Friday and enjoy. And we'll see you next week when we start working on a few uh, quilty projects as well as some pillows and fun things out of our canvas. You have a wonderful weekend and keep sewing, smiling, and sharing.